Hey, what is up guys? This is Mo, welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about the GK61 Optical Mechanical Keyboard. This is one of the most popular gaming budget keyboards on the market right now, and it has a lot of things going for it, but is it worth your money? Let's get right into it. All right, let's hit it off with the unboxing. You're gonna get the keyboard itself, a silver braided USB-C cable, a basic keycap puller, and a metal switch puller. This will help you take out the switches because yes, this keyboard is hot swappable so you can use any Gateron optical switch with it. Finally, you're gonna get a reference sheet for the key combinations which I think you'll definitely need because there's a lot of them. The build quality here is very very good. The case is entirely made of plastic but it's a dense and solid plastic. I have it in the white color here which I think looks really clean. But there's also a black color which is actually 10 bucks cheaper. Looking at the bottom here, it's very plain and matches the rest of the board. On the four corners you'll see these recessed rubber feet. These are actually really nice and do a great job at keeping it from slipping around. But the GK61 does not have any kickstand adjustment, so you won't be able to adjust the angle. But I found that the overall angle it's set at is good for both typing and gaming. Although I do miss the kickstand sometimes to dial in that comfort. The GK61 looks really really nice, especially in this ice white color. It's clean and minimalistic aesthetic is really hard to hate on. Although the PCB and the board itself are finished in matte white, the keycaps on the sides are finished in a glossy white. This is usually done to make the RGB look better by reflecting on the keycaps. I'm personally not a big fan of this, but I know some people are, so this is going to be down to preference. This is a 60% keyboard, which is all the trend right now. The compact size factor is excellent for gaming and it gives your setup a more spacious and clean feel. What you give up is the number pad as well as the dedicated arrow and function keys. But you'll find that the arrow and function keys are printed on top as secondary functions. So you'll have to combine the function key with the key you want. By the way guys, if you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to smash the like button and if you want to find your way back to more of my content, then hit that subscribe button and turn the notifications on. This is the best way to keep up with all the video uploads as well as support the channel. Now let's get back to the review. Alright, so let's talk features. In terms of connectivity, the GK61 can be connected using the USB-C port set on the left side, which is an excellent location for it if you're looking to use it with a custom cable. Beware, some think that this keyboard has Bluetooth, but it actually doesn't. The papers inside mention Bluetooth 2.0, but this is for a different variant of this keyboard because this paper is printed for a number of different boards. At this price range, most keyboards on Amazon will use PBT keycaps, but the GK61 actually uses double shot ABS keycaps, which is a lower quality option that will develop an unattractive shine over time. These keycaps, in my opinion, are one of the biggest downsides of this keyboard. They are not finished well on the edges, else you'll see the sides are not evenly finished. It uses a cheaper process for the printing on the keycaps, which results in a bit of inconsistency. And finally, the wall thicknesses on the keycaps don't all look the same. The font used here is not a gamer font in any way, it's more of a standard generic font. The loops are not closed all the way, I'm guessing it's due to the cheaper printing process, but there's nothing to complain about here. Now fortunately, it's very very easy to switch out these keycaps for other options since the GK61 uses Gateron switches which are compatible with many standard keycaps out there. Underneath those keycaps, I chose to go with the Gateron Silver switches. I'm a big fan of linear switches and the Gateron Silvers are indeed linear, so they are completely smooth and silent with no bump or click to be felt at actuation. These switches are extremely fast with a very short actuation point of 1.1 millimeters and a very light operating force of 45 grams. So they are made for gaming in the forefront, but they are not so great for work and typing because the speed and lightness of the switches will probably cause a lot of mistakes and hits you didn't mean to make. With that being said, the good news is the GK61 is offered with various switches. If you want the best of both worlds, the red and brown Gaterons will be much better for typing and work use without sacrificing your gaming experience. If you're mainly using it for gaming and want the ultimate speed, then the silver and yellow switches are fantastic for gaming. So the variety offered here is very nice and will ensure that you will find the switch that fits your preferences. Alright, enough of me talking. Let's do a sound test so we can hear how the GK61 sounds.
Now the board itself is hot swappable, which means you can swap out switches yourself without the need of soldering. This is a really nice feature to have if you like to experiment with different switches without having multiple keyboards, but it is important to point out that the board is only compatible with Gateron optical switches. The stabilized use here do a good job for most keys in keeping the sound as well as the wobble out, but the space key as well as a few other bigger keys like the enter and escape key do wobble and make a small clacking sound. The RGB lighting on the GK61 is really nice. It gets very very bright and it looks absolutely fantastic. The lighting can be controlled at the hardware level using key shortcuts on the keyboard, but it can also be controlled through the software that is made for it. Well, that's at least what they say on their Amazon listing. I had a really hard time finding the software, they really don't make it easy to download it, and once I did, I had a really hard time running it and using it, so I ended up uninstalling it and sticking to the hardware options to change the lighting. Alright, so with all of those technical details out of the way, let's go through productivity and gaming use. For productivity, this hasn't been my favorite keyboard, but that is only down to my choice of switches. The Gateron Silvers are very light and very fast, so I end up making a lot of typing mistakes while I'm using it for work. If you plan on using this keyboard for work as well as gaming, then I really recommend you either get the red or brown Gateron switches. They're going to be much better for typing, but won't sacrifice gaming performance. The GK61 with the silver switches I have here has really impressed me for gaming. The switches are blistering fast and are very very smooth. They are very responsive to the smallest presses and this gives you the confidence to make faster combinations on the keyboard. FPS gaming in particular makes use of these switches very well. Also the small size allows me to pull in my mouse pad closer as well as get the keyboard in the best position for my wrist. Overall the fact that we can get an optical mechanical keyboard at this price range is amazing. The GK61 does a lot of things right, it's 60% size, variety of switches offered, USB-C and hot swappable capability are all really welcome additions, while the downsides being the below average keycaps and the difficult to use customization software, but the keycaps can be easily fixed with any standard set of keycaps. So overall, is it worth the $60? Absolutely it is. All right, and I think that is all for the GK61. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this review helpful, then do me a favor and destroy that like button. And if you wanna find your way back to more of my content, then hit that subscribe button with notifications on. This is the best way to keep up with all the video uploads and support the channel. Have an awesome day, everybody, and I'll see you guys next time.